there, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Now, I wanted to talk uh, very briefly about junk foods and about eating out at restaurants. Uh, I do get quite a lot of questions from people who have um, improved the, the, the quality of their diets and they're eating high quality foods. They've generally got a healthy diet, but they say, uh, people ask me, they say, well, quite often I'm in a situation where I have no choice uh, and I have to eat lower quality foods because... Um, we don't live uh, in isolated chambers in, in research laboratories. We live in the real world and we have families and we have friends and they invite you to birthday parties. They invite you to uh, restaurants. You go out with your family and uh, your families and, and, and your friends and uh, not always is there high quality food to eat. Um, so people ask, what can you eat when um, typical high quality food uh, is not available? Uh, this is quite a difficult question. Usually if you go to a, a family kind of chain restaurant, you can usually um, get dishes that come uh, with meat uh, and um, you can therefore ask them, ask the um, the restaurant not to, for example, provide the chips with the meat and you could have meat with salad. That would be fairly high quality. Uh, most of the meat uh, would be grilled. Um, and so that that's that's often, often an option. But if you go to a, a, a a sort of a, a what I would call a more um, mainstream um, chain eat, eating place quite often um, those types of foods are not available um, and this has come up quite a quite a lot and I do remember Dan Duchesne talking about this when I used to read uh, bodybuilding magazines back in the 1990s um, talking about pizza um, and I've, I've I remember reading articles by uh, by Dan Duchesne and he, he, he mentioned a, a pizza and he talked about it uh, you know the qualities of pizza and when you could eat it as a junk food and I've always agreed with what he said uh, and ever since that time I've always thought that pizza really is no different to uh, a cheese sandwich uh, and if you think about a pizza is how it's created um, it's um, it's obviously a, a bread it's flour uh, for the base and then on top of that uh, is cheese and tomato and generally on top of that they they will then put other toppings as well um, the thing about uh, the detrimental thing about a pizza really is the fact that the flour is usually refined. So you're effectively eating white bread. Uh, and if you eat refined uh, white bread all the time, uh, it can be um, de detrimental to your health. In other words, it does decrease your insulin uh, uh, sensitivity and it causes insulin resistance and that can contribute to weight gain. So eating pizza all the time uh, would probably be detrimental to your insulin sensitivity. And the fact that the carbohydrates, the refined carbohydrates are there with cheese, which is a, a source of fat. I think the two worst things that you can eat together are a refined carbohydrate and a, a source of fat. That is going to be the quickest way to make you uh, to gain to gain body fat. So pizza in itself is not inherently healthy food. However, there are times when refined carbohydrates are beneficial and that's after you perform physical activity. So this is a little trick uh, that I've used myself and I've told other people about. If you know you're going to be in a situation where you're going to have to eat something like a pizza, let's say you're going out to a pizza restaurant uh, and you don't want to have the negative effects, uh, simply perform physical activity before you go there and the, uh, the detrimental effects of the pizza really aren't that bad. Um, pizza really would only be bad if it was cooked in vegetable in any way. Uh, if it was um, if it was made in a quite a traditional way with the, simply the you know the making of the bread and then the the, the, the cheese on top and the tomato, uh, you can negate the effects that that those the, those refined carbohydrates are going to have. And of course, another little trick you could do you could use is you could take some whey protein with you in a little bottle, uh, and you could drink that with the meal, and the protein would then slow down uh, the digestion rate of um, the. Um, uh, the refined carbohydrates so those people that feel that they're going to have to be exposed to junk food um, pizza is really not what i would class as a as a, a as a typical junk food because it doesn't really have uh, metabolic um, implications unless you eat it at the wrong time and of course we're not talking about eating it every day we're not talking about eating every week even we're talking about eating it when you perhaps go out to a family meal for a birthday uh, and that's all there is to eat um, this is this is something that you can get used to as you get more uh, interested in nutrition is trying to find the least damaging foods obviously you know if you if you go through life eating a high quality diet it's very difficult sometimes to actually find 
uh, high quality foods when for example you're on a road trip you're going somewhere uh, and all you've got is motorway service stations perhaps you've eaten all the food that you've taken uh, you've miscalculated how much you need to take um, actually calculating which is the least damaging food to be able to buy from particular places is quite a skill and it's, it's if, if you can do that it's something that's going to add uh, and improve your diet because most people are exposed to poor quality foods at some time so that's my tip that's my top tip of the day if you feel that you're going to um, have to go and eat, eat sort of like um, these low quality junk foods, uh, pizza is probably the one to go for. And if you know that you're going to have to eat it, if you know that you're going to have to go out and eat these low quality foods, perhaps other refined carbohydrates as well. Quite often there are uh, most um, you know meals that are produced, um, you know, family meals, get together, etc. have refined carbohydrates. Um, you know, if you perform physical activity, exercise, you do a resistance training uh, uh, routine before you go, you go for a run. Uh, these things are going to get, they're going to negate the effects. You're going to have an uprated metabolism, which is you're going to sensitize your skeletal muscle to the to the carbohydrate, and it's not going to have a detrimental effect on your metabolism. So, performing physical activity before you go is a very good idea. Um, Picking the, picking the right food is obviously uh, a, a very good idea. If you can uh, have any influence over the uh, the types of foods that are there, that's obviously always worth asking as well. Many restaurants will actually put on a particular uh, food for you if you ask, particularly if you're paying uh, quite a large amount of money for a family day out. So it's actually worth uh, perhaps contacting the restaurant, ask them if you can actually prepare some food for you that's not um, uh, you, you know the mainstream types of food but I do understand that some people don't want to, to put people out and they don't want to appear to be different to everybody else it is quite you know there is a lot of peer pressure there to eat these types of foods um, and of course you can always be polite and you can always uh, you know pretend that you, you you're actually not that hungry and not eat that much although again that's quite difficult when there's a lot of very tasty food um, uh, being circulated one last thing I would say is if you go to a you know somewhere like this like a, a mainstream eatery stay away from the soft drinks uh, if you do have pizza or you do have any of these other foods and you've tried to negate the, the negative effects of them, um, stay away from the soft drinks because they will cause the most damage of all the foods that you could eat. Um, so make sure that you stick with the water or you have something else that's not going to have uh, high levels of fructose in. Um, and of course, many of these places do provide salad as well. So, um, it, it, you know, it's, it, it isn't as bad as it used to be. Maybe, te maybe 15, 20 years ago, it was actually quite difficult to get uh, some of these foods. But most restaurants, are, I think, are cottoning on to the fact that there are many people out there now that do go to the gym and they do want high quality foods. So if you if you do get stuck and you do have to eat pizza, um, you, you don't I wouldn't think of it completely as, a, a, you know, as junk food. It's not certainly as bad as many uh, other junk foods. Anything that's been fried, anything that's got lots of fat in that's been exposed to heat. Uh, crisps are particularly bad. Chips are particularly bad. Uh, anything from a fish and chip shop that's been deep fried is is, is, is very bad and that's because these fats actually uh, cause metabolic damage uh, many of the trans fats and the hydrogenated fats uh, actually cause metabolic damage uh, there's nothing really in a pizza apart from the fact that there's got this refined carbohydrate on it so really pizza is no different from a cheese sandwich um, as long as it's been um, you know cooked in a, in a reasonably traditional way so I wouldn't feel too guilty about eating it every now and then uh, as long as you don't make a habit of it uh, I hope that was interesting. Uh, I will, uh, if you leave a comment, if you have any questions, if you leave a comment in the uh, comments box below this video, as always, I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and I'll see you again soon for another video. And in the meantime, take care. Mm -hmm.